The Great War through a London child's eye. February the 14th, 1916. You never realise how many things around you come from Germany until you're at war. There's an area around Tottenham Court Road that used to have a great many German shops. They've all been shut down. Or worse, a sin I found when we went to the West End. I feel sorry for the owners of these shops. Some of them have been here for donkey's years. But they could have been spies for the hunt. We don't want Germans here, do we? Not when they're the enemy. Did you see? Even that pub called the King of Prussia has changed his name. Yes, it's the King of Belgium now. I suppose Prussia sounds too German. And Johnny Smith's dog has a new name too. What do you mean? What's wrong with Prince? Not that name, you dunce. The breed. He's a German shepherd dog. But of course, no one wants a fine dog like that having any association with the Hun. So apparently, that breed is to be called an Alsatian. I've noticed that even food is changing. I used to love a bit of German sausage. But they've given that a new name too. Now it's called Lunch and Meat. And the royal family have changed their name to something more British sounding as well. Yes. They wish to be known as the House of Windsor now, don't you know? I don't like all of these changes. Tell me about it. I got a rap on the knuckles yesterday for whistling. Can you believe that? Whistling? What's wrong with whistling? It was a lady police warden who stopped me. One of those new ones. She said whistling could be mistaken for an air raid warning. Folks are ever so nervous, especially with the Zeppelins, those terrible raids last week. Yes, that was awful. Mother was telling me that there was all sorts of new laws and rules. Even the newspapers aren't allowed to report as much about the war because of the risk of spies. Does your mother still work in the censor office? I bet she's busier than ever, making sure no one lets slip any important information. Yes, ever so busy. Thousands and thousands of letters every week come back from the troops, and even though the men are told to be careful, you can imagine they want to say what they're doing. I don't suppose she gives you any juicy details? Absolutely none. She must read the most terrible things. I know it upsets her sometimes. I suppose that it's good that women folk are feeling the jobs left by men, even if you did get your ear twisted. You see women porters and bus drivers everywhere now. My mother's not so pleased. You should hear her grumble. Privately, of course. Of course. So what does she grumble about? Well, she works 13 hours a day, almost every day, in the dirty, smelly factory and tells me she gets half the pay a man would for the same. That doesn't seem fair. And you know my mother. <laughs> she works twice as hard as my dear old dad ever could. She says those suffragettes have got the right idea. They want women to be treated the same as men and to be able to vote and all. Mother thinks they've got the right idea too. Although not everyone agrees. The worst of it for Mum is that the chemicals she uses in the factory make her hands sore and give her the most frightful cough. I think she'll be glad when the war is over and she can go back to charring. Well, we'll all be glad to see the back of this war. Then maybe things can go back to normal, whatever normal is. The Great War through a London child's eye. Supported by the National Lottery through the Heritage Lottery Fund. Read Edward's diary at funkidslive.com slash greatwar. Thank you.